In the Edge Blending tab, we're able to blend and feather our white level and black levels to make our multi-projector image seem seamless. I'm going to turn it on. First checkbox you see is the marker. Enabling this shows markers and vertical lines on your projector. They show you where the start, the width, the black border, and even your keystone on screen. Now typically that gets in the way, but it's good for a reference value if you're trying to find those points. Now, what you see is that we have the ability to blend all four sides of our projector, and we can do them all simultaneously. Let's focus on the right side for now, pretending that we have a two projector blend, and this is the left projector, for instance. We have the start, get to dictate where the blending starts. This is useful if you have a scrim that you've done a custom blanking on, or if your image is not the same aspect ratio as your chip. For instance, you're shooting 4.3 on 16.9, and that's not accounted for based on how you're processing the image. You can put that value into your start and then skip what would be the pillar box. Width is whatever the overlap of your projectors are. For instance, I typed in 600. That is done. This projector is now blending, starting from this pixel to this pixel, 600, it's doing a gradient processing from 100% brightness down to 0% brightness on the signal, not on the chip. You can't partially dim or limit the lamp or the laser mod. Everything else you see here is for the black area. Starting with the black border, this is a small border that is used to compensate for the light wash. That is the light that comes off of the DLP chip that isn't pixelated. If you ever look at a DLP image closely and throw up, say, a gray field, you'll see the gray field raster, but there's a small border around that of just ambient black light. That's just coming off of the chip as part of the DLP technology. Black border lets you account for that, um, especially in multi projector images. This lets you keystone that black border. This is nice if you're doing warps and you're keystoning. Can account for that in the black level although if your warp is getting quite extensive this isn't really going to help you but it is good for more basic warps that back to zero so we have our black border then we have our overlapped black level which is this region our non-overlapped black level all of this and the black border level which as we described this small region. All of this works together to give you one seamless image on your whites and your blacks. And it is something that must be done to ensure the integrity of your images and your presentations, especially on large screens. If we need to go a little further, especially in our blend, because this is using the default blending algorithm, come up here and turn on user. Now we have the ability to go into the settings of our blending curve. From here, we can change the gamma and how it curves to help us clean up the blend itself. This helps account for how a lens or how a lamp might be fading from the center of the image out to the edge or different screen technologies and other options. So you can change all those. You can reset it very easily. It's actually quite hard to get it looking better than the defaults. There you have it, that's blending. Let's move on to uniformity.